Big Mike here with Ace Entertainment. Today's episode, we got Aaron Smith of the Oregon Ducks. He's a running back, guys. Keep an eye out. If you like what we're doing, it subscribe button. Um, I'm Aaron Smith. I'm a running back at the University of Oregon, and I'm coming on the I Only Touch Straight in this podcast. Looking for the most beers on tap? Great steaks, great staff. Head over to the John B. Pub. We got the best beers, steaks, chicken wings, nachos in town. Come see us at the John B. Pub. The John B. Pub, the best bar in town. Come sign up for our football pool. Say hey, St. You. The number one sports podcast in Vancouver with Ryan Hayes and Big Mike. Ryan Hayes and Big Mike. I, never stop. I only touch greatness podcast. This is I Only Touch Greatness Podcast with Ryan Hayes and Big Mike. We are going live. Hey, Hey, Aaron, how's it going? Pretty good, pretty good. How are you guys? Good, good. Thank, good. You. thank you very much uh, for taking the time for us today. We appreciate it. Yeah, no problem. Thank you for having me. Thank you for having so, me. I'm, I'm Ryan, by the way, and this is Big Mike that you've been talking to. Yep. Nice to meet you, Ryan. Thanks again. Yeah, Thanks right. again. Uh, we're just going to ask you a bunch of questions about uh, football and your career. Uh, so born mm-hmm. in, uh, if, my, if my stats are right, born in San Jose, California. Uh, what was it. childhood like and when did you start playing ball? Um, Man. Okay. Um, born in uh, San Jose, California. I grew up with my grandma, my mom, my two aunties. Um, uh, I really didn't get into football until I was like four years old. Like, I mean, that's still really early, but yeah, four years old. I remember just sitting down, like watching, um, I remember we were watching like NFL, like we were watching the NFL with my like stepdad. And I remember just like thinking like, oh, why don't they just run around everybody? Like, why don't they just score every time? Like thinking it's a lot easier, but as I got into the sport, I realized that, you know, that's not the case, obviously. But, no, nah, I feel like that really started my first, like, true love for football. 
And um, I did a year of flag football. And then ever since then, I've been playing football. So I'm 19 years old now, and I've been playing since I was four. So it's pretty much just been a part of me growing up my whole life. And did you play any other sports when you were growing up? Yeah. So I played um, I played pretty much everything except baseball. I did basketball. I tried wrestling. I did track. I did soccer. Um, yeah, just everything except baseball pretty much. Okay. So when did you uh, kind of know that your love was going to be football and that you wanted to go the football path? Um, what's crazy is I think I always knew football was like the main sport, like the sport that I enjoyed the most. Because, I mean, I used to just run around the house throwing the football to myself as like a little kid. <laughs> yeah. So I always knew like football was one that I was going to like take the most serious. But um, I'd say I really didn't start like taking it seriously in terms of like wanting to play at the next level until like my junior year of high school. Like I think that's whenever – everything kind of came serious. I was like, okay, like I can maybe really play the next level. Like, let me try to work really hard and see if I can get there. Cause I gave up every other sport and just focused, like narrowed my focus on football. And what do you see yourself accomplishing in the next say five years or 10 years? Um, you know, for me, like I take it, I take it kind of like one step at a time. So I just, my whole, I keep it simple. Like as long as I get better every day, like I'm, I'm thankful. Like I don't want to leave and go into the next day like with leaving something on the table, like I at least want to just consistently keep progressing and getting better. That's the way I see it. Kind of like building, um, building like a, like a wall brick by brick, like placing it perfectly okay. each day until, until you have a wall. Um, I always love to ask this question. Uh, so you were a walk on with the Oregon ducks. Um, why'd you choose Oregon? Oh, man. Oregon's been, like, my dream school since I was a little kid. Like, I remember growing up, like, second grade, watching, like, uh, Michael James, Kenyon Barner, Anthony Thomas, Darren Thomas, like, watching all those great running backs, Royce Freeman, like, Thomas Hunter. Like, it's just it's just something that I knew, like, from the moment I saw Oregon play. Like, obviously, the uniforms helped, too. Like, those were really yeah, cool. Yeah. Like, a little kid, you see the uniforms and stuff. But, no, I just knew, like, from that day, I was like, yeah, I want to play here when I'm older. So, in middle school, it's actually honestly crazy because in middle school – my whole room was decked out in, like, Oregon stuff. Like, I had, like, Oregon stickers, like, the stickers of the helmets and everything. And it's just kind of, like, um, I was talking to my parents about it. It's, like, kind of came full circle. So I'm just thankful and just ready to just keep working hard. That's, That's sweet. We, yeah. we both, me and Mike, both are big fans of Oregon. And uh, we love the jerseys. We love the colors. And then it's somehow it always seems to be that all the Oregon Ducks, we've been interviewing a lot of Oregon Ducks. So yeah. it, it's just crazy that certain schools you have an ability to talk to them and stuff like we're getting to talk to you. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. We had on a bunch of the tight ends, uh, like Terrence Ferguson, Spencer Webb, uh, Maliki. Yeah. 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 Those are guys, the guys are a bunch of those great cool guys. Dudes. Yeah. Most definitely. Most definitely. Do you have any hobbies outside of sports? Um, you know, uh, since I've been here, I actually went on a hike. I heard uh, Spencer's view was really nice, so I went uh, I went on a hike with a couple of my friends and stuff. Um, but like pretty much outside of sports, you know, I like to uh, I like to like play video games. Obviously, play with my like friends and stuff. Um, spend time with family. When I'm back home, like I'll go outside, play like catch with my little siblings and stuff, just little stuff like that. But now, pretty much just like doing school, football, playing gaming, and just spending time with family. Yep. Uh, who would you say you mirror your game after or try and play like? Oh, man, that's that's a tough question. I mean, growing up, my favorite running back all the time was Adrian Peterson. But I just like the way he ran the ball, like just like so violent. Like he just was like the perfect running back in my eyes. Um, I actually have him hanging like right up here on my poster. Like I have like a whole bunch of posters that, you know, that I look at every day just like for inspiration. Yeah. But I say Adrian Peterson. Um, I just I feel like I just try to like look in a lot of great running backs and just take a little piece of their game and just try to like mold it into mine because like in the end of the day I just want to be the best Aaron Smith I can be you know what I mean so yeah it's just but no there's a lot of great running backs out there but I say that's, probably my favorite all time is Adrian Peterson that's so. a good mentality to have and is uh, 34 your favorite jersey number and and why um what's so what's crazy is uh I grew up wearing like I, I had a whole bunch of numbers growing up but I think the first number I ever wore was 32. Uh, when I was younger and at the time I was a big Maurice Jones Drew fan like I love Maurice Jones Drew um, and then I changed to number one and number 11 and then in high school I settled for 25 and I wore that all four years and then uh, when I came here they kind of picked they gave me 34 but like I, I'm not complaining I, I love that number so many great running backs wore 34 and surprisingly enough like my email that the school gave me 
has 34 in it. So it's just kind of like just com complete coincidence. So yeah, okay. You know, oh, I'm just oh. I'm, I'll wear whatever number. You know, I'm just thankful to be playing and just want to keep getting better. Just off the top of my head, Bo Jackson, a hell of a good 34. Yeah, Bo, Bo Jackson, Herschel Walker, Walt, Campbell, Walter Payton, a whole bunch of these. Yeah. Walter Payton, exactly, exactly. So it's it's uh, I'm in good hands with this number. Yeah, that's for sure. Uh, what do you see as one of your weaknesses, and how are you trying to improve it? Um, I say honestly, just improving everything. Like I just want to keep improving like my game altogether because I feel like you could never be 100 percent perfect with everything you do. So it's just getting as close to that perfection as you can. So just improving everything, catching, blocking, um, uh, just reading holes, just being patient, trusting alignment, everything like that. And obviously everything physically too, but I'm sure, you know, with uh, conditioning and stuff we got over the summer, like I'll be able to get into it pretty quickly, just get better and see my body just adapt to all that stuff. But yeah, yeah. always, always wanting to get better, just everything. Cause it's at this level, it's like a lot of it is physical, but football is, like 80% mental, you know what I mean? Like everyone's talented athletes at this level, but it's what it's like up here, what separates a lot of the athletes, you know what I mean? So just working 100%. on the mental part of it, working on the mental part of it is big for me too. But okay. yeah, I always, I always think I can improve on everything. Do you, any, uh, do you have any game day routines or rituals? Uh, um, I actually meditate. I meditate for like 10 minutes in the morning when I wake up sometimes. Um, it just helps calm down my life, just calm down, just – relax my whole body and just kind of like uh gives me clarity just into what i need to do and like what i need to accomplish for that day but um yeah i'll do that stretch a little bit foam roll um i drink like a protein shake and then i make myself like i don't know, like a peanut butter jelly sandwich something like that but i make sure to stay nice. hydrated water all that stuff but uh yeah okay uh, i say that's pretty much like my game day routine and all of course music headphones all the time always I'm the type to, before a game, I'm just in my locker, headphones on in my own zone. I don't really say anything. I'm just locked in. That's, okay, all, then that's how I go about it. On that note, what are you listening to pregame? Oh, man, so much. I say uh, pregame, pregame, always Meek. Number one is Meek Mill. I could listen to him with anything. Um, I say Meek Mill, Lil Baby, Olo. I say some Rod Wave, too. Okay. Yeah. And yeah. if you could sit down for dinner with anyone famous, dead or alive, who would it be? And have a conversation about anything. Yeah. You're shooting yeah. shit with them. Um, I say if I could sit down for a dinner, I'd have a conversation with Kobe. Just because yeah. I, I, I watched a lot of his videos, just a lot of like his, uh, his like speeches, like interviews and stuff. And it's just kind of like, it's inspiring just the way he kind of viewed life, not just basketball, but just like life in general. Uh, Mamba mentality. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I'd say, I'd say either him or uh, David Goggins, too. Um, I don't know if you guys know David Goggins, but David Goggins, I listen to him a lot, too. He's just, like, I love both of their mentalities. That's like, uh, whenever I just need that extra motivation, like, I watch one of their videos, and then that does a trick for me. Okay. But, yeah. Um, if there's a – actually, you are going to Oregon. So, uh, I guess uh, rookies, they got to sing a song in front of the whole team. Uh, what song are you singing? Oh man, I haven't even thought about that actually. Um, honestly, I, I, I don't know if you've heard this yet. And then if you get booed, you got to do it again. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I feel like I heard someone bring it up once. Um, but I honestly, I haven't even thought about it. But you know, I'll sing. Uh, I'll sing a uh, thousand miles. Yeah, that's that's okay. a that's a classic right there. So I'll definitely sing that one. Okay. Do you have any uh, special talents? Special talents. Um, Like, uh, mm, special talents, special talents. Oh, I'm really good with stats. Like, uh, like I know, like, I'm like a encyclopedia of, like, sports, like, for football and stuff. Just You just ask me, like, oh, who was this player in this year? Like, blah, blah, blah. Like, I'm good at that. Um, I'd say, like, I'm ambidextrous. I don't know if that's, like, a talent or anything like that, though. Well, you can you both, use both hands? Yes. Yeah, so it's weird. Like, I write with my right hand. But yeah. if I were to, like, shoot a basketball or, or throw a football, i throw with my left hand. So it's, it's really weird. Like, I do, like, uh, tennis or baseball, like, I'll bat, I'll bat, like, with, like, predominantly, right like, my right hand. But then shooting, like, throwing, it's left-handed. It's really weird. I don't know why I'm like that. <laughs> hey, that's cool. Yeah. That's cool. <laughs> yeah, you make for a good baseball player when you can switch hit. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's, that's, the, that's the thing people always tell me. It's, like, you got to play baseball. Like, if you're left-handed, like, if, if you can do both. <laughs> 
and I just, just never got into it. I don't know. <laughs> Hit him with the draft question. Okay. If you were an animal, what would you be? If I was an animal? Yeah. Um, I'd say I'd be a, I'd say I'd be a lion. Okay. Just because I, I just like how, uh, I just like how they carry themselves. You know what I mean? Like they're not very, they're just prideful. Not like in a arrogant way though. It's just, they're just uh, very, just like confident in themselves. And I like, I admire that. And how important is a young athlete's social media and the way they present themselves? Uh, well, I feel like, especially nowadays, with just like how everything's in the social media like wave, um, I feel like it's super important. It's, it's kind of like your platform, you know what I mean? And, like a lot of people can look up to you that you don't even really know. Um, and it's just kind of like you want to be, you want to sh- put forward your best foot like at all times, like when you're on social media and stuff like that. Um, I remember uh, then growing up, it was like a rule. It's like if you didn't want your grandma to see it, like don't post it on social media pretty much. So that's, <laughs> yeah. I kind of I kind of try and go by that. Um, you know, I just, whatever it's like, it's just, I just try to keep it cool and whatever, post my interests and stuff on there. Um, and, but yeah. Yeah. And it's also, this, big deal, you, yeah. And this is you building your brand. So you want to make sure you're, you're building it properly, right? Definitely. 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 What, uh, what stadium are you looking most forward to playing as a road stadium this year? Oh man. Um, I honestly, any of them, just whoever we're playing, like, I'm just thankful. Like I'm, like ready to go, so I want to just play. But you know, definitely, uh, like a lot of cool stadiums. Like I think the Rose Bowl Stadium, uh, place where UCLA plays. Yeah, uh, obviously Col- Ohio State Coliseum. Yeah, Coliseum. Um, obviously, like Ohio State Stadium. Like just a lot of great stadiums. But uh, at the end of the day, it's just I'm just ready to play football. Excited to play and football. So. Let's hope they open up the Canada border so we can cross the border and head down there to Husky yeah. Stadium. Because we, yeah, yeah. we usually go every year to see the uh, Ducks come up when they play in Huskies. Yeah. So I'm, I'm like, curious. So you guys are from Canada, but you guys yeah. are like, uh, what made you guys big Duck fans? Uh, so, well, Portland's a little bit farther. Or it's in Eugene, but that's past Portland. But uh-huh. I honestly, uh, I've been to Portland. I love Portland. And my friends are all from Oregon. And uh, I don't know, we slowly – Became Ducks fans. I always go to Husky games, but I was I'm obviously wearing Huskies gear when I'm <laughs> at the game. So yeah, was, yeah. because we go to a lot of Seahawks games and we try to catch the Huskies game on a Saturday, and it always yeah. seems to be Oregon is a team that's in town. And yeah, I honestly, and then Oregon, we like the colors and we like all the guys for taking their time for giving us their time during our interviews. So we've slowly yeah. been merging into Ducks fans. Awesome. Yeah, you guys awesome, got the dude. sickest jerseys around. I mean, uh, it starts <laughs> there for sh- it starts there for sure and uh in the NCAA it's always you and LSU for uh you guys and LSU for me. It's always been those two yeah. teams. I'm a huge Bengals fan, so Thank you. Okay, I appreciate yeah, and, that. I'm gonna, let, I'm gonna let all the Seahawks stuff slide. I'm an, I'm a Niner fan. I'm still salty by the and those those, that, those games. <laughs> but that's that's how it started. I grew up a 49ers fan. And uh, because yeah. Seattle's only a two-hour drive from us in Vancouver, the yeah. we, we ripped down there and we go to the Seahawks games. And it started off as I was only going to 49ers games. I'd be like, okay, the 49ers are coming to town. Let's go see them. Oh, man, we'd go there. And then I started going to more Seahawks games and more Seahawks games. And then eventually I changed yeah. into, this, into the Seahawks fan because you can't be wearing opposition jerseys in seattle they they give you shit in the stands so uh, i try to be there so I just yell and scream with them but i still have a soft spot for the 49ers okay that's good to hear that's good to yeah hear. uh aaron you're off to a hot start in spring here too uh everything i keep reading is about you and terrence ferguson tearing up the spring and the offense uh how, how have you started off in your eyes um I mean, I, I, in my eyes, I always feel like I just need to keep working, just keep um, staying the course, is what like my coaches told me. But um, yeah, no, it just I kind of took spring as like a time to just get accustomed to everything, but also just realizing like, hey, you know, the quicker you learn plays, that's the quickest way you can get on the field, and just pr- earning the coach's trust and stuff like that. So I always feel like there's just more work to be done. Um, like like Kobe said, job's not finished, but you know, it's just 
it's definitely fun to get out there and just be playing football. Because once once the plays and everything's aside, it's just you're just there playing football. Like it's, it's a game, you know what I mean? In the end of the day, and uh, you're just doing it at a higher level. But no, it's it's definitely fun out there. I think the biggest biggest thing for spring and spring for me was just having fun and just enjoying the moment, and just you know not letting everything overwhelm me. Obviously, because we have I think like three weeks. Like I had three weeks to like learn um, a lot of the plays and stuff. So they were just big on like, don't overwhelm yourself, but you know, whatever you can learn, just try and learn it. So I just tried my best and more and more I learned it, the more and more reps I got um, and just try to make the most of my reps. Is there always a spring season or is that new just because of COVID? Um, yeah, I think, I think there's always been spring ball. Oh, um, okay. I think what was new this year was that, like there weren't any fans allowed just with the just with the risk of COVID and stuff like that. But yeah. I think yeah, I think spring roll is like a normal like a normal oh. thing. I never yeah. even I never even knew about it until I started it's just, it's it just, Yeah. And then oh. uh, I was gonna say I was gonna say that uh Die uh fellow running back Die on your team was saying that he's never seen someone pick up the Oregon offense faster than you. Oh man. No, nah, that that meant a lot when I heard that, but you know, it's just like I said, it's just gotta keep working. Um I still, you know, like I know, I say like from what I learned, like I, I learned a pretty good amount, but there's always more to learn. You know what I mean? And I just always just got to keep staying on top of those plays and stuff like that. Because it's, it's kind of like uh, in class when you're studying, like you will hear the material one time, but two weeks from now, you got to go back and refresh on that material to make sure you know everything. So, yeah, no, I just, like I said, I just took it as the quickest way I can get on the field is just learning the plays. And so I just kind of attacked the plays attacked all that stuff with the same mindset as like you have when you attack training, like the weight room on the field, all that stuff. Like and I said, mental, like the mental aspect of it. And what's one lesson that your coaches have taught you? One lesson they've taught, um, compete. Like just whenever, whatever you're doing, like just, there's always someone that's working just as hard or harder than you. So never get complacent and just always compete in anything you do the uh, biggest thing coach Cristobal says is how you do one thing is how you do everything so even when we're off the field and like how we approach school how we approach you know just simple things like making our bed or just we're doing what we need to do this is how we'll approach everything so I think that's a really good lesson that's stuck with me so far just treat everything like how you want it to be done just building discipline all that kind of stuff okay. which is the great, mentali great mentality great mentality to have no definitely definitely What's your uh, biggest football moment thus far in your career? Um, just like in general or like just being yeah. here so far? Biggest just in general, moment. football, yeah. Mm -hmm. I say I say one of the funnier ones like for me was I think I was six years old, five. I was playing like tiny my like Pop Warner and uh, we were playing this one team. I think I had like three touchdowns that game. And uh the like a parent on the other team like came up to my parents like oh you gave him his Wheaties today or something like that <laughs> and uh, I I didn't know what they were but then we went to the store that like that's after that game and I saw Wheaties and like you know how they have like the athletes and stuff on the yeah. Wheaties cover um, I was inspired to get Wheaties and ever since then I started I started eating Wheaties <laughs> so um, yeah that, that's yeah. your go to cereal um Wheaties actually no my favorite cereal is Cinnamon Toast Crunch I can always eat Cinnamon Toast Crunch but Wheaties, Wheaties is good though I like Wheaties a lot like honestly I, I'm not picky like I eat a lot of cereals but if I had to pick Cinnamon Toast Crunch yeah I'd say maybe biggest maybe biggest my bad maybe biggest football moment as like a team though I'd say uh my junior year when I was at uh when I was at Harker before I transferred to Midi um we, you know we were a smaller school so we weren't really known for football but that year we had our best year in school history and like that was a really special moment we won um we won our first playoff game and like school history like it was a big big wow game. i mean this school is really known for its academics and not for its sports at all you know like no knock on the school it's just like it's history is yeah you know for academics and uh it was just a great place and just being able to do that for the school just like meant a lot for us and because like we were part of history like we were a small team like maybe 22 people like 25, wow. like something yeah something totally. like that so but we've been playing each other with each other for so long so we were we were like this so it was just um and we had a great coach preaching a great message like all year like give like he he just taught us like the message of just giving like give yeah. back to people like all this stuff so it's kind of uh, brought together like a team identity like selflessness and i think that's what contributed to our success too so i say like in a team moment that's probably like my biggest and most favorite like football moment just because you get to accomplish it with your teammates 
like all those yep. summers we were out on the field conditioning and stuff it finally paid off you know what i mean so i'll say probably that and then just like funny like individual story the, the weedies one obviously but yeah <laughs> yeah and how do you juggle or how do you find juggling school work and your professional goals as well um no i mean my parents always taught me like when i was little um do what you needed to do what you need to do first before you can do what you want to do so like normally before when i get home like first thing i'm doing is i'm showering and then i'm getting my homework done for the rest of the day that way i don't need to worry about it like later on at night like so i don't lose sleep all that stuff because like we wake up really early in the morning so i'm not like i like my eight hours i need to get my eight hours at home least, so. yeah me too i need my beauty sleep yeah exactly <laughs> exactly and sleep is <laughs> what's your uh, favorite i gotta get it yeah what's your favorite gatorade color Favorite Gatorade color? Um, I'd say Glacier Freeze. It's like the light blue one. That's, yeah, that's yeah. the best one in my opinion. That one's my favorite one. I used to freeze those little Gatorade bottles as a little kid and just take them to school all day and just drink them. Oh, yeah. yeah that's awesome. That's what I would do, too. If you had to eat yeah. one one of these two for the rest of your life, are you choosing pancakes or waffles? Man. Um, any, can they be any type of waffle and any type, uh, any sure. type of pancake? Sure. Yeah. Okay. I'm probably going with uh, waffles there. Waffles. Okay. Okay. Yeah, waffles. Uh, I like I like I like them both. Don't get me wrong, but if I had to pick, I'm going with waffles. I know. I like yeah. them both too. And I even just ordered, I even just ordered uh, waffles, chicken and waffles for breakfast. So that's <laughs> man. Awesome. Yeah, I haven't had I haven't had chicken and waffles in a minute. Uh, you, yeah. you might make me want to go get some. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, if a scout or GM were to ask, uh, what does Aaron Smith bring to the table? Mm, I'd say I'm coachable, uh, I'm driven, and reliable, I'd say. Just just like uh, if I had to pick three things to like, describe myself, like coach-wise, and like I just – I always want to just absorb information, like absorb information like a sponge. Like just – especially being here, there's so many like – so much wisdom just – throughout the entire football staff from players to coaches and stuff like that. I just try to absorb everything and just, you know, pick people's brains, so to speak. Like, just just so I can uh, always just grow and get better, like, mentally and physically, all that stuff. Um, reliable, because I feel like I hold myself to, like, a high standard, like, just in terms of, like, what I want to do. So I feel like um, coaches and people can rely on me because – I want to like, I want to rely on myself too. You know, I want to be reliable and be like that person that people can depend on. Like a coach can depend on to make a play. You know what I mean? Like fourth and one can like, can they rely on me to get this first down and keep the drive moving for the team? You know what I mean? Or can they rely on me to get this block? So the quarterback can have enough time to throw the ball, like stuff like that. Uh, and I say driven just because obviously like I have goals, everyone has goals and I just want to keep working hard and getting better every day to accomplish those. So, yeah. It's like Pete Carroll. It's like Pete Carroll. Do you uh, hand the ball to Lynch? Do you trust him, or do you throw the ball? And in, in that situation, I'm I'm a little biased. I'm a running back, so I, I say hand it to I say hand it to Marshawn. Let him let him do his work. Yeah, and being from the Bay too, you know. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> yeah. exactly. The uh, do you have a go to Selly after you score a touchdown? Go to celebration. Oh yeah. man. Uh, when I was little, I used to see uh, LT, every time he scored, he kind of do this and flick the ball. So I yeah. like that as like a little kid. But honestly, when I score, I just kind of, I hand the ball to the ref and I just do like my quick little thing and I just celebrate my teammates, go back to the sideline. It's just, it just happens like in the spur of the moment. I always saw uh, how Barry Sanders never celebrated when he scored a touchdown. He just kept it classy like he's been there before. So I really like that too. Yeah. So That's it's just all about business. It is. Hey, hey, go ahead, sports? right? Yeah, what about sports movie? Do you have a favorite sports movie? Oh, yeah. Uh, Remember the Titans. 100% okay. my favorite movie. Yeah. My favorite, too. Love it. Yeah. So it's, it's, it's I, a can, great I can watch that movie a thousand times. It, it's still... It's still yeah. yeah. We, we used to, um, like, on on game days when we have, like, long bus drives, like, they play it, like, yep. in the bus for us. Oh, man, I used to watch that. I think I've seen that movie at least 50 times. <laughs> it's oh. crazy. And then I always say, Rudy... Rudy, yeah, that's a good movie, too. Rudy's a good movie. Do you have a favorite sports franchise? It doesn't have to be football. Favorite sports franchise? Mm. Sports franchise? I don't know about a franchise, but, like, I have, like, a favorite sports player that I follow around, like, a lot. Like, LeBron, obviously. Um, yeah. LeBron, just he's been on so many different teams. Like, he's yeah. like, been playing for so long. Like, he could almost be a franchise himself. <laughs> but, yeah, he's pretty yeah, much. I say, uh, I say I look up to LeBron a lot. Like, I like LeBron. Um 
other sports. And I'll say, yeah, pretty much just like LeBron or the Niners. And, and you know, Le- LeBron is kind of like his own franchise. He's part GM, he's part coach, he's, <laughs> yeah. Part, yeah. he's basically part an owner. He everything. Yeah, he, so, yeah. He, te- he tells who he wants on his team, he tells who he wants to play with on the floor, so he's he pretty much runs that team, that's for sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I just kind of admire how he can go into like a new situation and just adapt right away and just kind of take control and just get back to doing what he was doing prior before he left. You know, that's just crazy just to be able to go to a whole new team after playing for summer for like a couple of years and just picking up where like he never left off. It was just, it was just crazy. And uh, one more. Uh, when you get that first big contract – from the NFL, what are you buying? Man, um, I'm definitely not spending it on myself. Uh, I, I say I'd probably spend it on family. Um, I don't know exactly what I would buy yet, but I feel like it would definitely go towards my family and then just saving that money. And yeah, it would definitely go to my family because for me, I get more joy out of spending something on my family than for myself. Yeah, and a lot of people have been saying that lately when we interview them. And it's like Alvin Kamara was saying a couple of weeks back how he's never even touched his uh, salary yeah. from the NFL. He's only been spending his all his like signing bonuses and all endorsement. his endorsement endorsement yeah. money. Yeah, yeah, I thought yeah. that's a, that's a smart way to go about it. Yeah, because everyone can get caught up in you know buying the nice things and stuff like that, but. It's it's important because you know football is never guaranteed. You can get hurt any any moment. So just saving that money for when you really need it, like when you're done playing football, I think is the most important thing. And not everybody can be AP or Frank Gore, where you're playing 20 years exactly. in the league. Exactly. Especially exactly. as a running back. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, you Aaron, I just want to. Yeah. Go ahead. I was just going to say, like, you can see in the trend nowadays, like, multiple teams that like, kind of have, like, a running back by committee sort of thing, just because yeah. having that one workhorse, workhorse running back isn't as, like, uh, like prevalent nowadays as you would, like, back in, like, the 90s or the 80s or something like that. Yeah, that's for sure. I agree. It's all a timeshare now, most most teams, and that's what hurts our fantasy now. It's like, unless you get one of those top three guys that are uh, yeah. guaranteed, like, the workhorse guy, then you're stuck with a guy that's, like, a 1A, 1B. Yeah. Yeah, yeah exactly. like, unless you get your Derrick Henry's or uh, yeah, Christian McCaffrey type. Yeah. yeah, I mean, this year you look out for the uh, Harris playing in playing yeah, in you, Pittsburgh. Yeah, yeah. he's going to be crazy. Yeah. He's going to run that ball every single time. Oh, most definitely, most definitely, he will go in there and help him right away. Yeah, that's right. Uh, Saquon, Saquon too, when he's back yeah. from his injury. He'll yeah, Barkley's back this year too. Yeah, yeah, yes, sir. Hey, Aaron, I just want to uh, thank you very much uh, for taking the time for us today and coming on. We're big fans of you, and we know you're going to go far in football, and we can't wait to cheer you on to the top. Thank you. I appreciate it. No, I appreciate you guys for having me on anytime. Yeah, and I can't, uh, wait, to be, I can't wait to be having you on my fantasy team one day. <laughs> <laughs> That's and great. That's great. That. And then also seeing you when you come up to play, for the, play against the Huskies. <laughs> if you're looking for a mug, perhaps a hoodie. Head on over to I only touch greatness.com. Looking for the most beers on tap? Great steaks, great staff. Head over to the John B. Pub. We got the best beers, steaks, chicken wings, nachos in town. Come see us at the John B. Pub. The John B. Pub, the best bar in town. Come sign up for our football pool. Say hey, sent you.